Hi class, let's do some linear algebra. Today we're going to be focusing on transformations of space. And we're going to focus specifically on two-dimensional Euclidean vector space, R2. Here's a question that you can ask. Given a matrix A, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, what does it do to, to the points in R2? So if I, via left multiplication, applied this matrix to every single vector in R2, what would the new space look like? This is kind of a hard question to answer. And so I want to focus our attention by looking at a specific shape in R2. And we can track what A does to all of R2 by looking at what it does to this triangle T. So T is our green triangle. And it's defined by three points. U is 2, 1. V is 4, 2. And W is 3, 4. We're going to see what A does to the triangle. This might actually still seem like a hard problem because the triangle itself has a lot of points in it. Do we actually have to sit down and work out what happens to every single point in the triangle? Well, the answer is no. We can simplify this by noting first that lines remain lines. I'll explain what this means, and then I'll show it. I'll, I'll talk about why this helps us. Let's look, let's say we've got two-dimensional space, and we've got two vectors. Here's the vector v, and here's the vector w. Between them, this vector right here is w minus v, just by vector addition, because v plus w minus v is going to be w, okay? I want to write down a parameterization of the line between the point of v and the point of w. And I claim it looks like this, v plus alpha w minus v where alpha is some real number between 0 and 1. Let's explore why this might be true. Well, when alpha is equal to 0, what do we get? We just get v. Okay, we get this point right here. When alpha is 1, well, we've got v minus v, we get w. That's this point right here. And when alpha is strictly in between 0 and 1, what we get is v plus some scaling of w minus v, which is some point in between. OK. What happens when we apply a to it, some matrix? Well, matrix multiplication distributes across a plus, and it commutes with scalar multiplication. So what we get is AV plus alpha AW minus AV, which, following the same pattern, is the parameterization of the line between v, a, v, and a, w. All of this is to say we only need to figure out where the points in the triangle go, and then the lines between them get sent to the lines between the new points. Okay. Only need to check the points. All right. Here is a second 
graph of our triangle in R3. Let's just work out what happens. What is AU? This is negative 1, 0, 0, 1 times 2, 1, which is negative 2, 1. That is here. AV is equal to negative 1, 0, 0, 1 times 4, 2, which is negative 4, 2. That's right here. And A, W is negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 4, which is negative 3, 4. That is right here. This is A of our triangle T. All over here, we've got a T. This allows us to easily see what this matrix does to T and therefore what it will do to the entire Euclidean space. Negative one, zero, zero, one is a matrix that represents reflection across the y-axis. Here's an exercise for you. Say P is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0. Find PU, PV, and PW. Draw PT in the same way as we did before and describe the action of P on T, and therefore on R2. Let's do another example. Say A is 1, 0, 1, 1. Here is our graph again. Let's check what happens to the points. A, U is 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, which is 2, 3. That is right here. AV is 1, 0, 1, 1 times 4, 2, which is 4, 6. That is here. And AW is 1, 0, 1, 1, 3, 4, which is 3, 7, which is right here. This is AT. This kind of transformation is called a shear. Kind of stretching. Okay. Here's what we've done. We've just given some examples of two by two matrices representing transformations of space. You have reflections, we have shears. The example that you worked out is a, pro is a projection. And this is just to give us a beginning of an understanding of what's going on in linear algebra more generally. The linear in linear algebra in part, refers to the fact that lines remain lines under linear transformations uh, given by matrix multiplication. And we explored this through a few examples. You might, of course, have a lot of lingering questions. Number one, what will, what matrix will represent 
reflection across the x-axis. See if you can figure it out. What matrix will represent projection onto the y-axis? And a deeper question that you might have, can all transformations of space that we can imagine be represented by multiplication by a matrix? Left multiplication, to be precise. Think on these things. Talk to you next time.